I've been a lean and player. I've been broke as a joke. I've been a money maker. I've been a record breaker. Taking credit as an educator. I've been known to spit the flows and make it shaky, shaky things. I've been locking, stopping, let it hang. Watch us as we drop this hip hop, it's like it stays. We make the whole room drop and everybody sang. We want the funk. We gotta have that funk. Oh, we kick it old school. We think we're so cool. We take it back to the past. We gonna act a fool. Ah, enough jumps the middle finger. Make hello, 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 and welcome to Sports Buzz, a fanatical view. I am your host, Scott D. Lewis, here live in studio Comcast Cable Channel 23, downtown Danbury, Connecticut on this April 20th, 420. That's right, you know what they say, smoke them if you got them. Um, and I am here in studio. We are gonna be here until seven o'clock, our usual 6.30 to seven. We'll open up those phone lines right away, 203-792-4101. Usually at this time, you would be hearing my right-hand man, Mr. Bob Rod Jr. cutting me off or talking over me as I do my open, but he is here, he is just not mic'd up tonight because he is in the director's chair uh, as our man Mike Tui could not be here tonight. I will still plug to his show even though he dissed us this evening. Expose Cinema Friday nights at 9, Wednesdays at 1, and of course Bob's show Spotlight on Tuesday nights at 9 and Wednesdays at 12. So Bob is in there, but have no fear, he's not by himself. The production assistant extraordinaires, fresh off their vacation to Disney World, Disneyland, whichever one that is in Florida, Connor and Jenna are in there, I'm sure, uh, helping him as much as possible and making sure that things run smoothly. Mike McFadden, the Met Maniac, might show up at some point, so if that happens, we'll get somebody out here to uh, talk with me as well. But otherwise, it's just me and you and the audience. So uh, this could be a good night to get that phone line working. 203-792-4101. Maybe it will ring for us this evening. Speaking of ringing, how about this? We've been talking about Play for Purpose now the last month or so as they get ready for their annual event that takes place up in Ridgefield raise money, awareness, local charities, playperfervice.org, the 72-hour hockey marathon. And uh, they have been working with the New York Rangers. The alumni teams have been coming down the last couple of years and playing a game in the middle of the event. That'll happen again this year as the event takes place May 4th through May 7th, but the big alumni game is May 6th. Um, and there we have that, 2017 May 6th at 5 p.m up there um, in the Ridgefield uh, Winter Garden Ice Arena. And if you want to be involved, you can be. They're looking for players uh, and all that. So go to playforpurpose.org. If you're a hockey player, you want to be involved throughout the whole weekend, you want to be involved that day that the Ranger and her alumni are there. But they have been working with them. And how about this, for this year, big event, they got to go with Rangers alumni to the New York Stock Exchange on Wednesday and ring the bell. How about that? Play for Purpose has come a long way. And there they were right down there in lower Manhattan ringing the New York Stock Exchange bell. And you could see they were all smiles, all very excited. Rod Gilbert, Adam Graves, Andre Dorr, a few of the Rangers alumni that were there. Probably some Rangers brass as well. And uh, some of the Play for Purpose guys um, that are part of the whole project. And I see some of the guys who actually play in the hockey game as well recognize some of them. So that was absolutely huge that they got to do that this week on Wednesday. So really congratulations that this has continued to grow the way it has and that the Rangers have just uh, been there for them the last couple of years particularly. And this year really just stepping it up even more as this continues to go. And then they confirm this week uh, one of the all-time great and most memorable moments at least if not memorable players but the moment no one, no Ranger fan will ever forget my toe, my toe. He stepped on my toe. Stefan Mateau will be one of the Rangers alumni in attendance on that Saturday afternoon game at 5 o'clock for the Rangers alumni. My toe. Maybe he'll get to score a game winner in overtime in that alumni game, and all the Rangers fans from the area can relive that magical moment when they won their cup on the way to winning their cup when they beat the Devils. Uh, to get to the cup finals that year, what, 95, 96, 
something like that. Andre Dorr will be there, Brian Mullen, Ron Duguay, some of the other Rangers alumni who will be in attendance this year. Uh, so it's going to be a great event. We know it's all because it started because of uh, one of my favorite kids of all time, Caden. Uh, Caden Simonton, uh, you know, he had was born with a rare heart condition, had to go through four open heart surgeries before the age of four. And he basically did each one with a smile on his face. The first one took place two, three days after he was born, an absolute infant. And uh, he toughed that out and he never complained once, went back every time he had to. He's gone to, he continues to go to get his checkups. He's got a clean bill of health right now. He's the poster child for this um, surgery that they did on him and he's really helped them study what to do and help other kids. And now they have the charity event and they donate all that money to help other kids in need, much like uh, the kid, Caden, needed help and they gave it to him and he's doing great. So hopefully, you know, this will just keep going and going and going. But really, that was impressive that they got to go down to the New York Stock Exchange. All right, speaking of uh, charitable events and celebrities getting involved in the local scene, we do want to mention June 9th, the first day of the uh, Westerner season, is also the day of the celebrity breakfast and doc gooden will be in the house dwight gooden will be there speaking at the amber room that morning um you know so it's always a great event we're there usually filming and we get that stuff up for you on these local airwaves so hopefully uh, we'll be there with the cameras and doc will put on a show i'm sure he'll have uh, all the people there you know listening intently to what he's got to say uh, about his life, about his Met days, about <clears throat> beating the Red Sox in the World Series. Uh, not a moment. I, 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 don't, I don't know what the deal is. They always seem to get, you know, these guys who are attached to the 86 World Series. I mean, why? I mean, I go down, I donate my time with the camera work, I film the breakfast, and I got to sit and listen to these guys talk about how great it was to come from behind against the Red Sox in game six and then win it in game seven every year, it seems like lately. Maybe not every year, but it sure seems like it. They're just bringing back bad memories for me, but it is great to see these guys. So uh, you should check that out, DenverWesterners.com, I believe is where you can go to find out information about tickets to that celebrity breakfast. Uh, I'm not sure if it's sold out yet. Probably you can still get tickets. Uh, they usually, you know, get pretty close to a sellout for that and with Doc in the house, I would not waste any more time. June 9th will get here sooner than you think. I mean, we're already almost to the end of April here. May is right around the corner and the season will be beginning and uh, we'll get to it. So uh, if you want to check that out, we've got Doc Gooden in the house. All right, let's change uh, the tone here actually to a negative tone. I do want to mention uh, something that happened I was going to mention this anyways because I thought it was interesting that Aaron Hernandez was found not guilty in the double murder uh, that they tried to tag onto him after the guilty verdict he had on the single murder that took place in 2013. So he's been in prison now for four years. He's now serving life, well he was serving life without parole for the single murder. But the not guilty came in on Friday which I thought was rather interesting. And then the stunning news came in yesterday morning that he was found dead in his cell, hung by a sheet. They call it a suicide, of course. Uh, full investigation will take place. His lawyer says no chance in hell that he committed suicide. He was not in that mindset to do so. He was encouraged by the not guilty. They were ready for the appeal and retrial of that first single murder. And remember, the motivation for the murder that he was convicted for was to shut that guy up for the double murder that they tried him on that he was then found not guilty for. So it does not seem to make much sense that he would take his own life now uh, at this point in time. Very, very strange. Assisted suicide perhaps? A little jailhouse justice? Who knows? Uh, but that is very curious end to this really bad saga in sports lore. I mean, the Patriots caught him immediately. I, I know a lot of Patriot, er, Patriot haters try to uh, get under the skin of the Patriot fans, but we wrote him off immediately. Patriots did not try to do what a lot of other teams do 
and hide behind the, uh, you know, the process, the due process. They caught him immediately and we forgot all about him. But, um, you know, very interesting situation. And it happened on the day that the Patriots were down at the White House. First time a team who won a championship got to go visit the new regime. And interestingly enough, Tom Brady was joined those who did not go. 30 players did make it out of the 54. Not a great number for our boy Donald Trump. Um, you know, there was a little controversy with some more pictures and the duplicitous way of the media, of course, trying to frame things in a certain way, comparing the pictures from their last championship when Obama was there, and it looked like a lot of the guys were there. And actually, pretty much all of them were there in that day. And then this year, only 30 players showed up. We knew there was going to be a bunch of guys who protested. And then Brady, who supposedly is friends with uh, Donald Trump, did not show. He claims uh, family stuff and some health with some family members that he had to tend to and stay home. So he did not go. Very interesting. All right, I did want to mention all that stuff. And I did also want to mention something big that happened while we were gone last weekend, not this past weekend, but the weekend before at the Masters, an event like no other. Hello, friends. Sergio Garcia, out of nowhere. And you know, I was thinking about it really because, you know, we cover the big golf events, the majors mostly. We'll touch on some other little golf stories throughout the year. And while this was unfolding, I was realizing that there has been times in the last couple of years where I've noticed Sergio kind of lurking. Top 10 finishes, putting himself in position, and then coming up short like he always has, 76 other times, I believe, uh, 76 starts in the major. But here he was really having an outstanding tournament. And uh, he did struggle at a couple points, and then he rallied huge eagle on the Sunday at the Masters and he ended up winning in extras after he missed a putt that you thought might be his undoing, but he did get it done. So Sergio Garcia, hats up to him, finally breaking through. Remember, for many years, he was viewed as the best player to never win a major. That kind of talk went away a little bit in recent years as, you know, he lost so many times and other young players were coming up and he was not really the story anymore. Justin Rose right there. Uh, probably felt pretty bad about his final performance, but you know, it did turn out to be pretty good. And the Spaniard, El Spaniard, gets it done. Sergio Garcia gets it done. So I did want to mention that it was a major, it did happen while we were away, and uh, I wanted to mention that. All right, before I get to five days of Boston sports viewing hell, I will say that the Red Sox touched a little sunshine on the Boston fans this afternoon as they took two out of three from Toronto. They had an afternoon game up there and they won four to one in extras. We'll get a little bit more into baseball later in the show, but I did want to mention that in case any Boston fans out there are still feeling the sting of the last five days of playoff action that has not gone well. Let's break it down. Five days of hell. Saturday afternoon, the Bruins playing in Ottawa. They had already won game one. They were up three to one in the third period, about 10 minutes to go, looking like they were gonna come home up 2-0. They give up a weak goal, then a great goal. They go to overtime and they lose that game four to three. And all of a sudden the series is tied 1-1. That evening, news breaks of the horrific, tragic death of Isaiah Thomas, who had one of the great seasons of all time in Celtics history and certainly one of the great seasons of a little man in uh, NBA basketball history. Really, he was an MVP candidate the whole bit. And his sister passes away in a one-car accident in his home state of Washington, a million miles away from where he was in Boston. So now it's just a grieving Thomas, and what is he going to do? He does gut it out and goes to game one and tries to play through it. Actually comes up with an amazing performance, all things considered, 33 points, but the Celtics fade down the stretch against the Bulls, lose game one. Uh, what was the score in that game? 106-102 uh, on Easter Sunday, as they're all feeling the pain and trying to comfort their man, Isaiah Thomas. 
and it was not to be as they faded down the stretch. Monday, we look to turn the page, Boston fans, and look for the uh, Bruins to get back on track and go back up in the series, but no, they fall behind 3-0. Then they rally with three quick goals over a six-minute period in uh, the second period of that game to tie it at three. They have all the momentum. They put plenty of pressure on the Senators in the third period, but they can't get the breakthrough goal. They end up going to overtime where they are given one of the worst penalties you'll ever see. Um, the announcers really went crazy on this. Couldn't believe the call against the Bruins on what should have been a power play for the Bruins because there was an illegal hit to the head of a Bruins player and then he retaliated and they put the Senators on the power play. The Senators end up getting the power play goal, win it 4-3 in overtime. So now the Bruins, after should have been up 2-0, now find themselves down 2-1. Tuesday comes around and my suspicion was true. I figured if there was any chance Isaiah Thomas would have a good game, it would be in that first game. And he did with the 33 points, you know, still kind of new and feeling the emotion, but he was wilted and uh, more fatigued in game two on Tuesday. And the Bulls bullied them and they uh, maybe possibly bullied them into quitting as they went down 111-97. As I see my man, Mike McFadden, walking into the studio. Uh, so he'll be joining me. He's gonna get his microphone uh, on the chair there, Mike, and mic yourself up and you can sit there. The cameras are all set, it's connected. Just attach your mic right to yourself and you'll be good to go. Uh, you don't need to touch any of the cameras, Mike. They're good to go. Just get your microphone on your thing and you'll be good. So Tuesday, the Celtics lose 111-97. Thomas only has 20 points in that game and you can see he's clearly fatigued as he loses or he misses six free throws. He's a 92% free throw shooter on the season, so you know he's not right as he misses his free throws. He didn't really hit any big three-point shots in the game, and you can see the effects of what is happening to him and his fam family really wearing him down and his teammates as well. So they, the one seed against the eight seed, go down 111.97. You might want to get the headset on, Mike, so you can hear your director's instructions uh maybe you know unplug from over there as i instruct my man mike what to do here um, and then when it's back wednesday bruins lose 1-0 to complete the five days of hell uh as they go down now three to one when they were in good position to be up 2-0 and in full control of the series now they suddenly find themselves down uh, three to one as they lose one zero last night get shut out at home Thankfully, both teams are off today to give us a little peace. And Isaiah Thomas flew to uh, Seattle to be with his family. He does plan on being back with the Celtics tomorrow night in Chicago. We'll see if maybe getting away from the team, maybe, um, you know, he's able to, you know, you know, regroup and maybe the team himself, themselves will be able to regroup as well and maybe do something for him uh, as he tried to do something for them all season long with all his performances, but really just a brutal situation. As far as the games themselves, 16 offensive rebounds they gave up in the first half of game one. You're not going to win any games doing that. They did not uh, get the memo as they gave up 10 first quarter offensive rebounds in game two. Robin calling Moses Malone Lopez went nuts for 18 points and grabbed offensive rebounds galore in the uh, game two as they just, you know, manhandled them. And really, it was just not good. And you got all the secondary Bulls players making shots. Uh, really, guys you never really heard of. And you got Rajon Rondo tormenting his former team, getting nearly a triple-double. D. Wade coming up with some big shots. Really just a horrible situation for the Bruins or Celtics as they're an eight seed going against a one seed. Off the top of my head, I can remember the Knicks won as an eight seed in the lockout shortened season of 2000, I believe it was. And then the famous time was when the Nuggets knocked off the Sonics, Seattle, uh, in the mid 90s. Dikembe uh, was the big man in the middle for Denver, boy, back then, the rich, creamy Nuggets. Um, the other action in the NBA I want to get to. Say that again. We'll break down some of the other series. Washington is up 2-0 on the Hawks with their 114-107 and 109-101 victories at home. That series shifts to the ATL next. 
Toronto is in a dogfight right now. They lost game one against the Bucks, but they did rebound. 97-80 through three as they were shut down in game one, 106-100. That game was tied late as the Greek freak coming up big for Milwaukee. That series shifts, tied 1-1 to Milwaukee now. Toronto has their hands full. The Cavaliers has kind of had their hands full as well, 109-108 and 117-111 victories in game one and two against Indiana. Um, you know, that game two, you thought after they pulled out the game one would be a blowout, but it was not. The Pacers were right there down the stretch, one possession away really from what, trying to get uh, a win in Cleveland, but they'll move to Indiana in that series. Um, out West, it's the Warriors up 2-0 on the Blazers, 121-109 and 110-81 blowout in game two without Durant, who's come back from his injury, but he had a little hamstring thing going on. And uh, the Clippers and Jazz are locked up in a tight series, 1-1. One 97-95 one. was game one as uh, Joe Johnson hit the game winner. And 99-91 as the Clippers bounced back. No Gobert, he hurt himself about 13 seconds, and he's their big man in the middle. So I'm not sure if he's going to make it back for the series or not for Utah, but that's kind of a big blow to them as they shift that series to Utah. Clippers had the home court. Houston in the battle of the who's going to be MVP. Is it Harden or is it Westbrook? They are up 2-0 as they have home court. 118-87 blowout, 115-111 tight game as Westbrook went for 51 points in game two. But that series shifts to Oklahoma City and the Spurs up 2-0 on Memphis as they held Memphis to 82 points in both games, 111-82 and 96-82. The coach for Memphis called out the rest as uh, Kawhi Leonard has more free throw attempts than the whole Memphis team. Not good. McFadden, are we settled in? Are yes. you mic'd up? How you doing there, Mike? I'm doing good, Scott. Have you watched any of this NBA action? Yes, I have, actually. Anything jump off uh, your head as far as anything big you think see, you see happening? Golden State looks like uh, they're going to go to the finals. Yeah, um, I would think so. They look pretty I, I good. I feel bad for the Celtics, particularly Isaiah Thomas. That's I mean, an unbelievable yeah. situation. But uh, I tell you, uh, my meat looked as looked better than I thought they would. Chicago, you I mean? mean the Bulls, me, Chicago. Yeah, Bulls yeah. look good. Well, before the series started um, and before the tragedy happened, I was concerned about this matchup. I was also concerned about the Celtics in general. I've talked about it all year. I think this is more of a regular season team, despite the fact that they got the number one seed. I think that has a lot to do with their grit and gut and their coach. But they are not, in my opinion, built for the postseason at all. And I also just cannot stand a team that does not rebound. And they're going up against a Bulls team with all their flaws during the re regular season, which is a pretty good rebounding team. Right. So it's a bad matchup. They're getting exposed on the glass big time. And the Bulls have players who've been around, veterans who can knock down shots and all that. So uh, the Celtics are obviously in huge trouble. Um, anything in okay, hockey, Bob. let me give you the standings. I got to mention the Rangers because Bob is in there. 2-2 uh, two, two back and forth series with the Canadians. Five Canadian teams made the playoffs this year after none last year. And in game one of all those series, the Canadian teams lost. Now they have recovered in some senses and it looks like some could advance, although none have uh, really clinched anything yet. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. But the Rangers tied up 2-2 with the Canadians. 2-0 uh, Rangers game one, 4-3 overtime Canadians game two, 3-1 Canadians in New York on game three. But the Rangers bounce back at home 2-1. Game five is tonight back in Montreal. Capitals have had their hands full with the 8 seed Toronto. 3-2 OT Washington game one, 4-3 overtime Toronto game two, 4-3 overtime Toronto game three but the Capitals did win 5-4 last night. Pittsburgh almost swept away Columbus, but Columbus did get a win 5-4 in the game uh, last night, I believe. Uh, but Pittsburgh is up 3-1 on Columbus. Nashville, okay. another 8 seed giving Chicago all they can handle. Chicago is down 3-0. Mike, what do you think about that? Crazy, 1-0, 5-0. First two games shut them out back-to-back -back in Chicago. They came home and won at home in Nashville 3-2 in overtime. So an eight seed looking to knock out Chicago. St. Louis is up 3-1 on Minnesota. Anaheim swept Calgary, so one of the Canadian teams is already out. And the Oilers and Sharks locked up big time. Jumbo Joe, Joe Thornton, a Bruin old-time favorite, 7-0. 
uh, in the game to tie up that series. Jumbo Joe missed the first three games of that series as they went overtime uh, in the first game, 3-2 and 2-0 and 1-0 were the games Edmonton won. Um, all right, we only got a few minutes left. We do need to mention some baseball. Red Sox did win today to move to 10 and 6. Break up the Yankees. Did anybody see this happening? I mean, to add to the eight, five days of hell that the Boston sports fans were watching with their playoff failure, we got to watch the Yankees winning on a day to day basis eight in a row. They did finally lose and then bounce back um, last night. They're off today. So they've won nine out of 10. How about your Mets? Were you worried when they lost four in a row there, Mike? I was wor not worried in the sense that starting pitching has been good, but the bullpen, it would be good. We get Familiar back Familiar today, comes back from the suspension. And hopefully every guy gets back in his role. Yeah, well, that'll the case. change everything when you get everybody back in their role Absolutely. properly. Um, so that should help. Uh, the Red Sox are 10-6 and six with their win today. A little upset with John Farrell. Not sure what he was thinking. Their new signee. Chris Sale, who's been everything they've asked for, he goes, what, uh, eight innings today, just threw 101 pitches, I believe. He had 13 strikeouts. He was absolutely dealing. It's a 0-0 game. The Red Sox score one run in the top of the ninth inning. Send your man back out there for the complete game shutout. Instead, what does he do? He gets Kimbrell up in a rush situation because you have to think in a 0-0 game, the closer is not expecting a pitch in the bottom of the ninth until they score that run and all of a sudden he's got to get up quick. He gives up the home run to tie it at 1-1 and then the Red Sox get three in the top of the tenth to win it 4-1. So no decision for Sale with the 13 strikeouts. I believe he's reached double digits in strikeouts in all three games he's pitched to start his Red Sox career. So he looks okay. like he is absolutely legit. All right, I do need to make a plea. Where is Strange Man? The Bruins are falling apart. I'm on the ledge myself. The Celtics are dying, and you have not shown your face at all. You were texting me left and right during the end of the regular season, and once the Bruins clinched, he's gone silent again. <laughs> the silent Strange Man, where are you? The playoffs have begun, Strange Man. Return to okay. sender. Let me know you're out there. All right, play for purpose. Again, I do have to mention what an event that was at the New York Stock Exchange this week with former Ranger players. Make sure you look into it, uh, playforpurpose.org, uh, as that event is coming up in two weeks. They need hockey players. They need support. This uh, charitable event is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Get on board, people. Support these people. It goes to a good cause. All right. I think we are out of time, and we will see you. Actually, we're off next week again in two weeks. Take care. Yeah, yeah, yeah.